people often say that it's very beneficial to read math books written by legendary mathematicians. The quote is, you should read the masters because by reading math from the best, you can become the best. I don't necessarily agree with that statement. I believe that the best math books to read are the ones that you personally want to read, the ones that inspire you. Because when you're inspired to do mathematics, that's when you learn the most. And you can learn from any math book. A good math book to one person is a bad math book to another person. This book is considered legendary. It's called Pure Mathematics, and it was written by G.H. Hardy. G.H. Hardy is the mathematician who worked with Ramanujan in England. And this is the book he wrote. So this is a math book written by one of the masters. A Course of Pure Mathematics. Let's go ahead and take a close look at this book so you can decide if it's a good book for you. G.H. Hardy, 9th edition, and this one was published in 1948. Printed in Great Britain at the University Press, Cambridge. Here you can see the different editions of the book. I think it is extremely instructive and enlightening to read the preface to the first edition, so let's at least read part of it together. This book has been designed primarily for the use of first-year students at the universities whose abilities reach or approach something like what is usually described as scholarship standard. I hope that it may be useful to other classes of readers, but it is this class whose wants I have considered first. It is in any case a book for mathematicians. I have nowhere made any attempt to meet the needs of students of engineering or indeed any class of students whose interests are not primarily mathematical. So he has written this book for math students specifically. Let's take a very close look at the contents of this book and then we'll look at how the book reads in some actual examples. So he starts off with real variables. You can see he talks about rational numbers, irrational numbers, real numbers, the continuum. Chapter two is on functions of real variables. So he talks about the idea of a function, polynomials, curves in a plane. And I want to emphasize this book has a lot of mathematics as you're about to see. So complex numbers, limits of functions of a positive integral variable, Lots of little subsections, which I think is nice. Chapter five is on limits of functions of a continuous variable and continuous and discontinuous functions. Chapter six is on derivatives and integrals. This is quite a bit of mathematics for such a small book. Here's chapter seven, it talks about Taylor series. These are topics that you might be familiar with if you've had some math classes like calculus. Chapter eight is on the convergence and in infinite series and infinite integrals. This is something you might study in a calculus two course. Chapter nine is on the logarithmic exponential and circular functions of a real variable. And here are the rest of the contents. This book smells incredible. I can actually just smell it right now and I'm just gonna have to take a whiff because I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Ah, my copy smells amazing. All right, so let's go ahead and just take a look at random pieces of mathematics throughout the book so that you can decide if you think this is a book worth owning for your personal collection. I think this book is worth owning. It is a classic. It is a masterpiece written by a legendary mathematician. Plus, I love the way my copy smells. Curves in a plane. We have hitherto used the notation y equals f of x to express functional dependence of y upon x. It is evident that this notation is most appropriate in the case in which y is defined by an explicit formula in x. We have, however, very often to deal with functional relations, which it is impossible or inconvenient to express in this form. That is true. If, for example, we have y to the fifth minus y minus x equals zero, or x to the fifth plus y to the fifth minus a y equals zero, it is known to be impossible to express y explicitly as an algebraical function of x. And then here he goes on and discusses some more mathematics. Here the logarithm is defined. Suppose first that x is positive, then we shall write the integral of one over x with respect to x is equal to log x. And we shall call the function on the right hand side of this equation the logarithmic function. It is defined so far for positive values of x. Next, suppose x is negative. In this case, negative x is positive, and so log negative x is defined by what proceeds. Also, if you take the derivative using the chain rule, you're going to get one over x. So that when x is negative, the integral becomes log of negative x. 
the formulae 2 and 3 may be united in the formula, the integral of 1 over x with respect to x is equal to the logarithm of the absolute value of x, where the ambiguous sign is to be chosen so that plus or minus x is positive. These formulae hold for all real values of x other than x equals zero. This book has really interesting exercises. He calls them miscellaneous examples. Here are the ones for chapter five. And you notice that sometimes he provides hints or solutions. The function phi of n takes the values one zero 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 one zero zero one dot 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 when n equals zero, one, two, etc. Express phi of n in terms of n by a formula which does not involve trigonometrical functions. And he gives you the solution there. But he doesn't show you how to come up with it. So a big con of this book, in my opinion, is that there's just not enough help. It would be really nice if there were full solutions. Look at this. Here is a question from the Mathematical Tripos, 1903. Here he has one from 1934. So you're getting some really interesting problems in this textbook. It's hard to compare this book to other math books that are similar because I can't really think of another math book that is exactly like this one. I don't think there is one that is exactly like this one. And that's what makes this so unique. The book is obviously a little bit harder to read than modern math books. And it's gonna take a lot of effort, but I think if you sit down with this book with a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen, and you just try to work through what you can, you're going to learn some mathematics. Obviously, there's gonna be a ton of stuff you don't understand because this book is much harder to read than the modern books that are used today in schools. I mean, it's a book written by G.H. Hardy, which was a legendary mathematician. He worked with Ramanujan. I also recommend that you check out the movie. The movie is called The Man Who Knew Infinity, and it's a movie about Ramanujan, and it's awesome. I saw it maybe a few weeks ago for the first time, and I was super, super impressed. I just have to smell this one more time. Oh, incredible. Anyways, I will try to leave a link in the description to this book if I can find it. I'm pretty sure you can get newer copies and they are relatively inexpensive. And again, it's not one of those books that you can just open up and everything is gonna be crystal clear and there's gonna be tons of examples and you're gonna have answers to the exercises. There's very few hints and solutions to the problems. There are very few illustrations for the concepts. For example, I was looking at the intermediate value theorem earlier in this book, and he didn't really draw the picture. I think the book would have benefited a lot if he would have just drawn a quick sketch of what he was trying to explain, but he didn't do that. He didn't do it because he's hardy and he makes it hard. <laughs> so yeah, a classic book. I like it even though it's a little bit terse and Maybe some people will say it's dry. G.H. Hardy was a very interesting person and a very legendary mathematician. And it's this is a must have for anyone who is, I think, serious about collecting math books. I'll leave a link in the description. Anyways, thought I would share this book. Until next time, good luck and take care.